Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Tensions rising after North Korea fires a ballistic missile over parts of Japan, prompting alarms and alerts to go off. How President Trump is responding this noon. Lots to talk about in the weather department as we have scattered rain and thunder showers around Metro Detroit and of course tracking tropical storm Harvey. Plus turmoil in Texas as that tropical storm is continuing to create rising waters and the heartbreaking images in a state gripping for more catastrophic rain. And Texas isn't the only target as tropical storm Harvey now has its eye headed towards Louisiana. Thank you so much for joining us this noon. Hurricane Harvey tops our news at noon. Right now, President Trump is on his way to Texas to get a firsthand look at the devastation from all of that flooding. The sheer scope of the disaster is unprecedented with thousands of people displaced and homes and businesses destroyed from the rising floodwaters. And you're looking at video of damage in Texas from this big, long lasting storm plus radar of the storm churning in real time over the Gulf. And let's go down to Texas Jay Gray is standing by with more from the scene. The fourth day of pounding rains here in Houston, those floodwaters climbing as they have been over the last several days. And this storm, as you talk about, still far from over right now. Misery and suffering in southeast Texas as floodwaters continue to rise. Rescues continued through the night in Houston. Truckloads of evacuees moved to higher ground. This morning at sunrise, airboats fanned out into neighborhoods, finding even more survivors. This scene has been playing out for days here. Stranded victims lifted from rooftops are finding their way to higher ground any way they can. We're going to be here until the last person leaves. But like those they've pulled to safety, experienced first responders here are stunned by the scope of the ongoing disaster. All the flooding I've seen in all the years is the craziest thing I've ever seen. Already, the rain that has pounded this area is measured in feet, not inches. And with the eye back over water, Harvey isn't done yet. The storm gathering that Gulf water and dumping it into areas that could see 50 inches of rain or more. Shelters across the strike zone are full. 7,000 evacuees packed the Houston Convention Center overnight, and now some are being flown to cities out of harm's way. As President Trump flies in today to meet with leaders and relief workers on the ground in Texas. A state struggling to cope with this unprecedented natural disaster. Yeah, there are areas in Houston that are going to see by the end of this day or tomorrow their yearly total in rain over the duration of Harvey. Some notes from FEMA as well. They have people on the ground, obviously. They are working through this, say they're going to be in this area for years. Back to you. All right, Jay, thank you. And so many of you are probably looking for ways to make sure that you can help and that it gets to the right place. We have teamed up with the American Red Cross to raise money to help the victims of Harvey. If you want to help by making a donation, you'll find a link right there on the Help Me Hank page of clickondetroit.com. Meanwhile, Hurricane Harvey is also bringing flooding rain to parts of Louisiana, and that has prompted memories of Hurricane Katrina. It was 12 years ago today that Katrina made landfall on the Gulf Coast. Katrina devastated New Orleans and other parts of Louisiana. Memories of Katrina are stirred up with forecasts of up to eight inches of rain in Louisiana over the next three days when the eye of now tropical storm Harvey arrives. Many Metro Detroiters last night got a taste of wet weather. Um, nothing compared to what Houston is enduring, but we did see our share of flooded freeways around here last night. Freeways were flooded. The worst caused the complete shutdown of 696 in both directions from the lodge to the Southfield Road area. A number of homes also have flooded basements. The freeway flooding was gone by the morning rush hour, but certainly a lot of folks were caught up in it in the evening rush. Thunderstorms and heavy rain hit the area hard on Monday, leaving close to 8,400 DTE customers without power. Many of those outages are being attributed to fallen trees in the storm. Crews are working hard to have everyone back up and on the grid by this afternoon. However, DTE does add that the process could be slowed down by the storms that are developing this afternoon. So let's get over to Brandon and talk a little bit more about what the DTE workers have in store for them and all the rest of us. 
Luckily, there's not a lot of lightning with these, but take a look downtown Detroit. Get ready. We've got a pretty decent cell coming our way of steady heavy rain capable of a little bit of thunder and lightning. You see there was a little bit here with this cell in central uh, southern Ontario there between Windsor and Essex, and we see a shower coming in the Canton area. That's a decent downpour moving south to north toward Plymouth and then Northville, and we widen the view. We see more lighter showers showers over Oakland and Macomb County. Macomb County has been getting the light stuff for a good chunk this morning and it's nuisance rain to the north. These soakers closer to downtown can be problematic out there on the roads and you see some more shower activity to our south. It's going to be wrapping more moisture in and so we have more rain showers 71 degrees right now and we need to keep the umbrellas handy for the rest of the afternoon with scattered rain and thunder showers through about 6 or 7 p.m. We've got you set if you're heading out the door a four zone. I'm sorry, local forecasters app, which has that interactive radar. Everything you need to know about the forecast, not only today, but over the next several days, you're going to need this Rhonda as you head out. Oh, we do. Thank you, Brandon. We are following a developing story from the Asian Pacific where actions by North Korea prompted alarms and sirens in parts of Japan. This alert with the sirens and that announcement spread through the Japanese island of Hokkaido after North Korea launched a missile that flew over portions of Japan before falling into the northern Pacific Ocean. President Trump spoke with Japan's prime minister by phone and then released a statement which reads in part threatening and destabilizing only increase the North Korea's Koreans regime isolation in the region and among all nations of the world. And the president added all options are on the table. The world is reacting to the new North Korean missile test as well, with Germany leading other European nations condemning the move, while China is urging all countries to exercise restraint. A North Korean diplomat says that his country will not flinch an inch despite threatening words from President Trump. The U.N. Security Council will hold an emergency meeting on the North Korean missile firing later this afternoon. Here at home, several communities throughout Washtenaw and also Livingston counties are left on edge after multiple children had disturbing encounters with a stranger in their neighborhood. Investigators say that they all happened over this past weekend in Hamburg Township, also Dexter and Putnam Township. They uh, appear to be all connected, at least police believe they are. The three incidents uh, happened on Saturday and Sunday. We're told that a white male in a light colored minivan or white minivan approached the young boys. Thankfully, none of those boys were hurt. New at noon, a new report card shows that third grade students in Michigan schools are having trouble with literacy skills like reading and writing. The state has released a report from MSTEP, the student test of educational progress, and shows only 44% of third grade students pass the English arts test. That's down from 2% from 2016 and 6% from 2015. Reading skills were also down for students in grades 4, 6, 7, and 8. They rose one half percent for fifth grade students here in Michigan. So numbers are moving in the wrong direction. So to come here on your Tuesday meningitis warning why the vaccine may not be enough to fully protect your child from infection. It's back to school time and we know parents are talking to kids about important topics like school lunches, making new friends, doing homework. But what about those things you don't want to talk to your child about? Our experts are telling us there's a long list of things. Unfortunately, it's a sign of the times. You have to do it. We talk to the experts today at 4. My daughter and I. Welcome back. A fugitive wanted on federal charges here in Detroit was arrested last night in Montreal by police patrolling on bicycles. U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement had listed him on his list of most wanted fugitives on drug charges going back to 2005. Police in Montreal last night spotted him and made the arrest after a brief foot chase. The native of Laos may face extradition to the United States to face charges. Two people are dead and four others injured after a gunman walked into a library in eastern New Mexico and opened fire on Monday. The gunman 
began shooting at the Clovis Carver Library just after 4 p.m. First responders were on the scene quickly after the active shooter call came in. People who were in the library describe what it was like, a scene they'll never forget. And then when he looked at me, he just had a, that smile like, you know, I got somebody else, you know, like, there was no uh, scared look. He had a happy face to where he was happy he was doing what he was doing. Life-changing experience. You'd never think that you'd be in this position uh, in the safest place in the county. A library should be a safe place. That suspect is now in custody. Again, two people were killed, four others injured. It is back to school time and some states require that kids entering the 7th and 12th grades get a meningitis vaccine, but that vaccine may not be enough to fully protect your children from getting an infection. There's a separate shot for teenagers, one that parents have to specifically ask your doctor for to protect against the deadly meningitis B because the B strain is re relatively new and it's not mandatory yet for all ages. So something you definitely want to talk to your doctor about or your child's doctor. So to come, it's got plenty of soul, serving up classic soul food made from scratch daily. We're going to take you inside this East Side Detroit soul food restaurant for Tasty Tuesday, Brandon. It's a good one, and here at home, the weather, not so much. We're tracking a little bit more war, uh, wet weather. We have a Wednesday warm-up, but it is a short-lived one. Your seven-day coming right up next. Welcome back, everybody. A handful of Houston horses are on high ground now, thanks to one man's bravery. Sometimes we forget about the animals yeah. out there during these big storms. A man who lives in Cleveland, Texas, right there next to Houston, helped to rescue the livestock. The cowboy actually went out on horseback to help with the rescue efforts. Look at how high that water is. In video of the rescue, you can see the horses trotting through water up to their necks. Thousands of pets, all kinds of livestock and other animal are being affected by this severe weather. We did get a taste of that in some spots yesterday. I know it pales in comparison, but the heavy amounts of rain in a short amount of time, that's exactly what they're dealing with down south, but it's relentless. Yesterday afternoon and evening, the total in Livonia, the big winner, 3.64 inches. Ortonville, which is near Waterford in Oakland County, 3.39 inches. Gross Point Farms, 2.71 inches. Macomb, 2.31 inches yesterday, and Sterling Heights, 2 inches of rain where that picture came from 71 degrees right now and some rain showers around no doubt about it a few soakers in the offing here this afternoon so we need to keep the umbrella handy and just know that if you've had some issues with the basement or street flooding it could be another minor issue today 75 degrees between showers and the Time frame is now until about 7 p.m. before we s turn the switch off. And then we have all the moisture left over. Temperatures dropping to about 61 overnight. That's going to create patchy, dense fog during the early morning hours Wednesday. If you're traveling out early, just know that. Right now, again, here we have these showers moving out of southern Ontario into Detroit, and there are very slow movers here with a little bit of lightning. Also, downriver getting a couple of these soakers. The one over in Canton has diminished a little bit here, and as we look over into Oakland County, these are lighter showers, but to our south, we're tracking a little more trouble that's going to keep pinwheeling in here off of the big lakes to the east and to our south. And then, of course, our attention goes down to our friends and family and all of those suffering in parts of Louisiana and especially Texas, where another 10 plus inches of rain possible here over the next 36, 48 hours, 45 mile an hour winds with tropical storm Harvey, and it's still over the ocean as we head into Wednesday evening. It's going to be into south or central Louisiana, finally starting 
starting to get on the move. Not that uh, anybody else around the country wants this thing, but we've got to get it out of the deep south. And finally, the weather systems are breaking. There you see some of our showers here tomorrow, starting with the fog. And it may take a while for those clouds to burn off. And then as they do in the afternoon, quick warm up to 80, short lived. A dry cold front Thursday brings temps down. Comfortable stuff, though, for Friday for sure as we start Ford Arts Beats and Eats. Well, today's Tasty Tuesday came as a recommendation from local 4 News director Randy Henry. And boy, are we glad he turned us on to Detroit Soul. Detroit Soul is more than just secret family comfort food recipes. We want to reach the soul, the heart of man, through our food. And that's exactly what we do. We're going to treat you well. We're going to treat you with respect. We're going to treat you with love. Love is that secret ingredient Sam, Jerome, and their wives learned from the faces, the family on the Detroit soul walls. Smother pork chop, turkey wings, uh, barbecue especially. Outdoor smokers slow cook the ribs and chicken fresh every day. Family recipes tweaked at this family owned joint turn the ordinary into a tender thing or wing of beauty. People love our turkey wings, so what you're looking there is some turkey wings that are fresh out of the oven. Comfort soul food can be loaded with unhealthy ingredients, but here everything is fresh. Locally sourced meats and produce like the collard greens done different at Detroit Soul. We try to make healthy choices, so it's not what used to be called the ham hock and fat back. We use smoked turkey now. The sauce or roux for the mac and cheese made from scratch. The gravy for the smothered pork chops made from scratch. Cornbread dressing is, you guessed it. Detroit Soul is practically farm to table, farming out a healthier soul food without sacrificing flavor. Bottom line, there's something different about this place. We believe in um, putting God first in all that we do. And we display the same thing in our food. Ooh, you want to check this place out. Trust me, Detroit Soul offering 20% off any of the their dinner items when you mention Tasty Tuesday. They look forward to taking care of you in there today. The restaurant is located on 8 Mile on the city's east side. Boy, did they take care of us this morning. The food is delicious. I had the greens, the macaroni and cheese, the dressing, and the ribs. Yep. I can't eat for the rest of the day. <laughs> Still to come, a look at where things in Texas stand at this hour. Last look for you before we leave. We'll be right back. 100 point Many cities in the wake of Tropical Storm Harvey's wrath have seen upwards of 40 inches of rain, and that number is expected to grow just by the end of this day. It just will not stop raining there. A pair of dams that protect downtown Houston from flooding have began overflowing. According to our sister station KPRC down in Houston, crews have begun releasing water from reservoirs to help relieve the strain on those dams, but that has caught as additional flooding in other places. As much as 12 to 20 inches of rain is expected to fall on that city in the next 24 hours. President Donald Trump and First Lady Melania Trump are arriving. They are there in Corpus Christi where they will be briefed by FEMA and National Guard officials on the damage caused by Harvey. The president promises swift federal funding to Texans in relief efforts for the overwhelming damage. And there it actually looks like a beautiful day there in Corpus Christi. They're just kind of to the just west of it. Just outside of the reaches of this thing that has been bullseye focused on that Houston area. Our hearts and prayers are certainly going out to them. We'll be back tomorrow morning.